One of the things that I had to do when I first moved to LA, I was pretty intimidated because of the crime tradition here. And I'm not just talking about Chandler and James M. Cain, I'm talking about James Elroy, Robert Christ, Michael Connolly. I mean, there's it, this, this city is steeped in a rich and vibrant crime tradition. And I had to live here long enough to really know the city and understand it before I, I wrote a book that takes place here. Because I didn't want to just do, oh, there's a murder by the Hollywood sign. You have to pick those. It's it's a, it's you know like Manhattan. It's an inexhaustible city. There's so many dark alleys and shadows and you know di different aspects of the city. And I had to know them in a way to be able to write about them with understanding as an Angelino. Which fortunately, you know, most of us who are Angelinos are from other places. A lot of people come here with dreams and aspirations, and so it's a it's a lofty place to write about. And there's also, we anyone who's lived here knows what happens when those dreams fail. You know, every time, you, there, no one here is a waiter. Nobody here is a barista at Starbucks. They're all aspiring musicians and songwriters and models and actresses. And at some point, for a very, very, very select few, those dreams come to fruition. And for a lot of other people, those dreams sour and change. And, you know, and then what happens? They're underground or they fester or they turn. and that, that yields a lot to, it's a lot of clay you can muck about with. And you know, there's a, a reason why I open, the, the survivor opens with a man who's crawled out on a ledge and we realize slowly he's looking out you know, across a, a couple blocks at the beautiful Pacific Ocean and we very quickly realize that he's out on a ledge outside his bank to kill himself. And there's a reason I set that in Santa Monica with him looking sort of off the lip of the continent at the ocean. It's like this wonderful, dream view and we slowly realize he's crawled out there because he's going to jump off this ledge and kill himself and he's outside a bank building and of course as soon as he moves his foot out into the open to take his life he hears the gunshots within the bank and there's a heist crew and instead of going off the ledge he goes back through the window and picks up a gun and ends up confronting the gunman and in a way like in the opening chapter it's about that reversal the constant reversal of of what you come here to find and you know your eyes being trained on the horizon and sometimes missing the things that are right before you and la for me in 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 this book functions more as the backdrop to to the ways in which dreams get broken rather than it being sort of a classic la book that's about i mean my books are not generally about sort of hollywood and actors and starlets but there's a there's a very strong theme in it. You know, one of the other characters is is a Ukrainian, a guy who came out of the zone, the prison system in, in Russia, who's a Ukrainian, and, and his his house is up in the Hollywood Hills and it overlooks the boulevard. And he looks way down on all those shining lights and everything that they represent. Um, and even if it's not expressly linked to, he doesn't want to, you know, what he really wants to do isn't dance. It's not that book. But it is about the ways that people come here to reinvent themselves, and this guy did too, but the past is gonna reach out and grab him. And those past instincts are gonna to come to fruition. And my main character, Nate Overbay, has all these dreams and has everything that were shattered for him. And, he's, and he thinks there's nothing left for him. And there's so much that's still left for him that he has to figure out and fight for. And so in that way, it's almost like the, the siren aspect of the city is in play. <laughs>